Welcome to a new episode of the Data Discovery Channel. And today I'm uh, with Matijn, my colleague. And together we're in London. Well, we wish we, we would be in London. <laughs> but unfortunately, um, uh, we're just in, uh, in the Netherlands uh, at our head office. Um, but we're joining a virtual conference that would have been organized in London. Uh, yeah, you can see it here on the screen uh, behind us. Um, and you can also see uh, we, we made it a bit English here with the double decker on the, in, in the back and, uh, and Martijn uh, perfectly yeah. blending in. And we also yeah. have some English sweets uh, at our table. <laughs> so it gives us a little bit of, a, of an English feeling during this conference. I even drove here this morning on the left side of the road, but <laughs> the other road users weren't uh, that, uh, that uh, enthusiastic about that move. But <laughs> Okay, we're, we're at a conference. Which conference? We're at the Data Governance Conference Europe, um, organized by IRM UK. And um, it's not only the Data Governance Conference that we can attend the, the sessions from, but, but it's co-located with uh, MDM Summit Europe, um, Enterprise Data Conference Europe, and the Business Intelligence Conference Europe. So it's an entire uh, mouthful of conferences that we can join. Um, and those are all different tracks. Um, we are mostly inter interested in the data governance track, but we can also attend um, sessions from the other tracks, which we um, regularly do. Um, IRM UK is an organization that exists since uh, 1999, so they're uh, not new on the market. Um, and since they were founded, um, over 25,000 professionals from uh, over 5,000 organizations worldwide um, have attended their events. Um, and now the thing with this virtual conference is that we have no idea how many people are joining this conference. And you can see, you can get an indication from the, the chat rooms, but yeah, we saw something like 50 people 50, in the chat rooms. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, we, we have the feeling that it's not that well attended, but um, yeah, we, we just don't know. Yeah. It's the first virtual conference for the both of us. And uh, Martijn, uh, what's your impression so far? Um, now, first of all, I really like the begin screen here. Um, there's a lot happening, um, a little bit um, the vibe you get from a conference. Yeah. But um, all the sessions we're attending, um, they are pre-recorded, so you can't interact during the session with the speaker, only afterwards, and then only by chat. So the real uh, interaction with speakers during the conference, uh, I, I miss it. I miss yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And also with the attendees, eh? because you have no idea who's there. Ah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can you can check the chat, but yeah, yeah it's, it's not the not same. The same. No, it's not the same. Definitely not the same. It is if if you have a session, you can ask questions in the chat session, um, and you do get answers. Uh, that, that's uh, at least what I experienced. Uh, but yeah, it's completely different from yeah. uh, when you're at a real conference and you can just walk to a mic and, and ask something. Or, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's just uh, just just the way it is. Um, I want to go through the keynotes. There's a lot of keynotes. Um, and the first one yesterday morning was by uh, Robert Maranka. He's a data excellence um, vice president at Schneider Electric. Um, and of course, being a, a vice president in data excellence meant that his talk was about data excellence. Um, and he explained um, that you can get to a, to a high level of data excellence um, by implementing a data excellence gymnasium. That was his, uh, his central part of his, his keynote. Um, and that consists of three pillars, um, culture, change and value. Um, where with culture, he um, went into the details of, uh, of teams, the data teams that you need, uh, where we typically see a data architect and data engineer and uh, the data scientist working together. But um, yeah, what he tried to explain is that you need new skills in that team. Uh, like a semantic expert yeah. um, and a visual artist and a philosopher. The maybe, philosopher, of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the philosopher for ethics, uh, for example, and AI. Um, but also, and, and that's um, really a central part in, in a lot of sessions that we see here um, yesterday and today, uh, is about communication. So a communications expert would also do well in uh, such a team. But of course, you can agree and disagree, but this was his talk. Um, with, with the change pillar, he went into the different approach of deploying data. So if you build a regular application, you have the, uh, the design, the, the build, uh, the deploy, and the deliver phases. Um, and for data, well, you, you almost have the same phases, but the, you use different terms. Um, so that's, that's what he um, explained. Um, and for value, and, and that's where he came into the, uh, what you want to achieve with uh, data excellence. 
um, is that um, if you really achieve the highest level of data excellence that you can get, um, you would have an enterprise digital twin. And meaning that for everything that you do within your organization, with your customers or with the market or, or with your employees, um, you have a digital variant, a digital twin. And that would be the final product of data excellence. And, and that also would really make an enterprise data driven, in his opinion. So, yeah, food yeah. for thought, interesting keynote. Yes. And then came the second one. Yeah, the second keynote was by Guy Harvey, and he's a tr data transformation lead at Siemens Managed Services. And the whole session kind of was, um, yeah, not really good because the sound quality was really bad. Sometimes um, I think it was a um, laptop microphone and sometimes the wind came by and you didn't hear anything for like yeah. five seconds. So lesson learned if you want to do an online session for a conference, don't do it in your, in your uh, garden. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's very irritating. Yeah, um, yeah but besides that, um, the session, um, the few things he talked about in the session was like um, was about data-driven organizations, and he really thought that data-driven organizations are organizations that are that are dependent on data and the analytics. So um, you really need to have the, the data to run your company, to run your organization. Yeah, and what he also said is that the people are very important. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's, he said that um, you are not really governing the data, but you are governing the people who make use of data and who enter the data. Yeah, yeah. So he even um, I said that it shouldn't be called data governance, but, but people, people governance. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, besides the audio issues, it, it was an interesting talk. Um, then we had two um, separate keynotes, so one in the, um, in the data governance track and master data track and one in the enterprise data and BI and analytics uh, track. And that's where I went um, while well, we were sitting in the same room, but <laughs> yeah, a lot of, you don't walk as much as uh, on a real conference. No, eh? no. <laughs> yeah, to the toilet here. But. Yeah. Um, anyway, that was by Nigel Turner. Um, he is Principal Information Management Consultant at Global Data Strategy. And that was really an impressive keynote. Um, he managed to, um, to throw 43 slides at me in 43 <laughs> minutes. Uh, so one slide a minute, but, but yeah, it were good slides. Um, and one that I really picked out of, hey, this, this is interesting, I hadn't seen that one from Gartner, um, is about the, the, the well-known people process technology triangle that we, I think we all know. Um, but Gartner um, rephrased that thing uh, two years ago already uh, and put data in the middle of it. So you now have people process technology, but data is at the heart of that um, um, yeah, digital business um, transformation um, triangle. He also explained how business strategy and data strategy have to go hand in hand, and one can do without the other. Um, and he also um, um, ended with uh, the data strategy and data governance, uh, which are uh, mutual allies. Uh, you need them both, and they really need to, um, yeah, to fit um, in each other. Um, and then he ended with four steps on how to develop a data strategy. So if you ever have to create a data strategy for your organization, this is a keynote to, um, well, to have a look at and, and see um, what, the, yeah, what, what you can learn from it. Yeah. You went to the other uh, keynote? The other yes. Track? The other keynote uh, I went to was about uh, AI, artificial intelligence, and master data management, and th combining those hand in hand. And this uh, keynote was by William McKnight, and he's um, consult at the uh, McKnight Consulting Group. And um, during the session, he first um, gave a lot of examples by, uh, of AI and all the use cases, AI, like fraud detection, etc. And after that, he gave some examples by, uh, for mass data management, for your customer entities, for your product and uh, data. And after that, he was combining the use cases, for example, um, where mass data management can help AI. And one of the nice parts about that was, um, he said that uh, one of the biggest problems for data scientists and for um, implementing AI is the bad data quality. Huh. And there, um, a team like Master Data Management can really help because they are fixing those data quality problems. And then they can really help AI um, to be more effective and to create faster and better solutions. After that, he uh, was talking about the other way around, how AI can help Master Data Management platforms. <laughs> And that, that was really awesome. Uh, there are some business cases I really didn't think of, um, like um, automated uh, data cleansing, uh, yeah. automating um, the data deduplication, so to combine it. Every, um, 
and that was that was really awesome. Um, yeah. He didn't talk about um, our existing solutions, but he was really thinking about the possibilities. Yeah, well, we are exploring such a possibility of one of our customers where we are implementing a product information management system uh, using AI. Yeah. So we're really uh, scanning uh, Excel files and uh, trying to, to add metadata to the, uh, to the Excel file such that you can read it in, automate it, yeah. And, yeah. and keep your, uh, you know, all your master data about your products um, up to date. So yeah, yeah I can really... Um, it's an awesome session, awesome session. Ah, good. And yeah. this morning... And then, then this morning, then Donald this morning. Farmer. Yes, the, key session, the, the keynote of Donald Farmer. That session was, I think, the best session of uh, yeah. the conference. I um, agree. He was um, talking um, about four uh, things like security, privacy, governance, and compliance. And all those parts have something in common. There's um, some over overlap, yeah. um, but they're not all the same. For example, he was talking um, about um, security, and security is needed for privacy. Because um, if you are not secure, everyone can take your data, and privacy has no, um, no, no meaning, no help. Yeah. Um, but it's not the other way around, because you can be secure without any privacy. Yeah. Um, and then he told uh, the same, but then about the governance and compliancy. So you can um, have governance, you can have data governance without any compliancy, without any um, compliancy with laws, or for example. But the other way around is not possible. So you can be compliant without governing it. No, because then you don't know the rules. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, that was very nice. And yeah. He made it so simple. That he the, made it so yeah. simple and he used a lot, of, a, a lot of analogies yeah. um, to really simplify the whole, uh, the whole talk, the whole theory. He also um, uh, had an analogy over, the, over gatekeepers and shopkeepers and that normal people in data governance and master data management are gatekeepers. They yeah. want to push everyone outside. No one can get the data because- They protect the data. They protect the data yeah. because then we are compliant. Um, but he was talking about maybe we should change that and we should be shopkeepers. Like shopkeepers, they have a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff like tobacco, alcohol, etc., And they sell everything, but they are compliant. So they cannot sell alcohol to, uh, to miners because they know the rules and then they yes. want to comply to those rules, or otherwise they get fined. Yeah. yeah. So that's all the way around. They are um, they are giving everything, but they are still compliant. Yeah. So his message was basically: we need to enable the business. Yes. Instead of preventing them to use data, and he also said that they get to the data anyway. Yeah. That's <laughs> also so true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a very very good keynote. Yeah, that was a very good keynote. Yeah. Well, besides the keynotes, there were uh, yeah, a lot of sessions. Uh, like I said, we have five tracks, six tracks, yes. where we can, uh, can pick our sessions from. So there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. There's a couple of them that I would, uh, would like to, uh, to emphasize uh, very briefly. Um, yesterday, during the lunch, we had a session uh, by ASML. Well, of course, being Dutch, uh, we are pretty proud of on, on uh, ASML as a company. Um, and Georgetta van den Ende and um, Erik Royakers, uh, enterprise architect at uh, ASML, um, explained in a short session, it was only 20 minutes, um, what they implemented being the ASML data management framework, uh, which they used um, the standards from DAMA, the DMBOX standard um, for. Um, and they also implemented the ASML data governance center, uh, which they called the Wikipedia of data. I really like that, uh, that phrase. Um, and they they uh, explained briefly, uh, because the session was sponsored by uh, Colibra, um, that they used Colibra to, uh, to implement their data governance um, uh, stack. Um, another session also from a Dutch company that was accidentally, but um, uh, I just uh, was attracted by the title. Uh, it was from uh, Friesland Campina, data is the new oil, question mark. No, data is like milk. And it was a funny uh, session and a very good session. Um, where the speaker went into the second rule of thermodynamics, uh, which says that as, um, as one goes forward in time, the net entropy, and that's the degree of disorder, or also called chaos, uh, of any isolated or closed system will always increase. And her, I don't, the, the reason why she, um, she, she went into that um, uh, rule is that um, if you do nothing about yeah, data, data quality, etc., you will end up with chaos, um, so you have to put effort into avoiding that. Um, and she also went into the title, Data is like milk. 
Yeah, she said, well, good data management is crucial for healthy growth, just like milk. Uh, but a lot of people are allergic to it. <laughs> and so you will find a lot of resistance when you try to implement things like data governance and, uh, and data excellence, etc. Um, and then um, also an interesting one, uh, because I heard of a new tool that I never heard of before. Um, there was a, a session from a Welsh water company. I'm not trying to pronounce their name because it was in the Welsh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but they used a data governance tool called um, Data360 Govern. I never heard of it uh, until yesterday, so that's always interesting to hear that uh, companies have a good, um, um, yeah, good press about it, are enthusiastic about it. And it also seems to fit well with uh, Microsoft solutions because they uh, implemented uh, Microsoft Azure data platform, modern data platform. So if that tool works with it, uh, I'm always interested to see whether it uh, can help our customers. Yeah. And then yesterday, at the end of the day, there was also an interesting session. Yeah, there was an, an interesting, uh, interesting session uh, called Best Practice in Data Stewardship, stu data stewardship. And it was by Jim Johnson, and he was uh, a member of the G DGPO, the Data Governance Professional Organization. And that was a new one for me because yeah, I didn't know it yet, Hans didn't know it yet. Yeah. And that organization um, is an organization um, with a huge uh, amount of um, webinars and documents about data governance and how you can implement it. Yeah. And during the session, they talked about the best practices in data, stu data stewardship and uh, what you have to do and what you, uh, what you shouldn't do. And yeah. it was a really great session. And also the website, I checked it, um, looks really good. Yeah, so it's a bit like uh, we have Dama, which is, uh, of course, very well known. Yeah. Uh, but this seems a little bit more practical from what I've seen. Yes. So yeah, yes. it's good to know that they're around. Yeah. yeah. I would like to end this short um, uh, summary of, of this uh, data governance conference by yeah, something like a word cloud, uh, things that I hear a lot in a lot of sessions. Um, let's start with data driven. Uh, you hear it a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a very popular term. Um, uh, you, can, you could write it in a word cloud with uh, very big letters because <laughs> you hear yeah, it in almost yeah. every session. Um, and of course, they uh, constantly explain that it, um, uh, to be, to be data-driven, you have to implement data governance, otherwise you, you, yeah, you just can't be data-driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, communication, I already mentioned it, and, and, and like we said with one of the sessions, yeah. it, sh it should be called uh, people governance people instead governance. of data governance. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, but communicating to the users that uh, you are working on a data governance initiatives and, and really taking uh, your business users along and uh, constantly informing them of what you're doing because it's a, it's probably a long uh, long term project that you're starting. Yeah, but, but and also um, <coughs> talking with them and, and sharing the vision where you want to go and uh, ask them what their vision is about data. Yeah, yeah, really doing so it that's, together. <coughs> that's really an important thing that we hear a lot. Um, what I also hear a lot is don't blow the ocean. And like um, um, if, you, if you want to, uh, to increase the temperature of the water of the ocean, uh, you can't do that all in once. You have to do it in, uh, in smaller steps. Um, and that's also true for data governance. Don't try to, try to do it all in once. Just start small. Yeah. Um, you also hear the quote, um, just enough data governance, uh, which means that you start with only one, two, or at the utmost three data domains uh, where you start to implement data governance for. Um, so that's, that's something I hear a lot. Um, yes. Yes, and I also heard about uh, measure your uh, performance and your progress and report it often. Because then you keep your organization aligned, you keep the business user aligned, and then you can um, yeah, really make a successful project. Basically also communicating. Yeah, yeah. yeah also communicating. Okay. Yeah. And of course the, um, the quote, um, culture is strategy for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. And it's also, it's also the, people governor, the people governance and the communication um, you really have to work on the culture. You, yeah. ca you can't de uh, deny it, the culture. Yeah, basically Donald Farmer also mentioned that in his uh, keynote this morning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, as you can hear, a lot of interesting um, stuff here at the Data Governance Conference uh, Europe, um, in London or <laughs> wherever you are, in Venedal for, uh, for us. Um, so, I hope you have an impression of um, what we learn here. Um, we still have some sessions to go this afternoon. But um, yeah, we wanted to give you a short impression uh, during the conference. Um, if you like the video, click the thumbs up icon um, underneath it. Um, subscribe to the channel so you always know that there's a new episode. Uh, thank you for watching and see you again next time. Bye.